This is how I turned an ordinary rigid toolbox from Home Depot into my favorite ultra personalized skate box for my roller skates. Welcome back to Quaddy Boom Body. Thank you for coming by and checking out my video today. For my skate box, I'm using the rigid 22 inch Pro Organizer from Home Depot. I found that it's the perfect size for my skates after I snapped out the removable plate from inside the lid and lined it with a little bit of carpet to protect my skates. I decided to work with an acrylic craft paint because it's really easy to work with and if I make any mistakes I'm able to just wipe it away with a little bit of water and start over. I am using Apple Barrel acrylic craft paint simply because it is some that I had found at a yard sale and some that had been given to me. So it's what I had in my crafting collection. As you can see, I've taped over some of the box with some ordinary painter's tape. And there in the bottom left-hand corner, you see my mismatch collection of paintbrushes that I've collected over these. Acrylic-based paints are water-based, like I mentioned. So anytime I want to thin the paint, clean my brushes, or clean up any of my mistakes, I just use a bit of water. The Rigid Toolbox already has a lot of texture and design to it on the front. So for the blue and green part, I simply followed the lines of the plastic molding and let that determine my design. On the center panel, I'm using what they call a stippling effect. I have a very tiny brush that I'm stippling around the edges and a wider round brush that I'm stippling on the inside. I used four different colors, a dark purple, a light purple, a dark pink and a light pink to do most of the stippling. And then I brought in just a little bit of the blue from the edges just to try to tie the colors together. After I completed the stippling, I went ahead and peeled off the blue painter's tape and used a very small brush to clean up any of the edges that had gotten smudged. After I painted the rigid emblem black and gave everything a chance to dry, I was ready to start with my figures in the center. My original thought had been to buy a sticker for this, but unfortunately I was not able to find one in the size and shape that I wanted, so I decided to go ahead and paint it. I had several layers of black over the rigid emblem, and then putting these several layers of green and brown over the top, I had to make sure to let them dry completely between each layer. Once I had my general outline, I used a guide to help determine where each part of the face would go. Uh, here I'm lining up the eye, the ear, the cheek, all that kind of good stuff, and then giving him the kind of face that I was wanting. I'm super glad that I chose this character, uh, one, because I love him dearly, and two, because it's hard to make him anything but adorable. Again, since this is several layers of acrylic paint and I'm trying to go over a light color with black, I had to let it dry and recoat the black and let it dry and recoat the black several times. The final color will be much darker. Now I am on to the object of his affection, the roller skates. Uh, I used a template again, but this time I used the inside of a cutout of roller skates and painted an edge around it. I then filled in that edge with a sharper line to make the roller skate shape itself. I used the same stencil to get the shape for the second boot and went on to decorate the wheels, the laces, and all that other good stuff. I decided to make these skates somewhat abstract because I find that easier than trying to make sharp, crisp lines with my paintbrushes. I found the roller skate wheels to be one of the hardest parts of this project. It was difficult to decide where to put them, how big to make them, and how far apart to space them to make them look right. To be really honest, the fact that acrylic paints clean up with water came in really handy because this is actually the second time I painted these skates. I got to this point one time, didn't like any of it, and just took some water and wiped it completely away. This is my second attempt, which I liked much better and ultimately kept. As you can tell by the variation in the light and camera angles, you can tell that this project actually took some time. Painting this box took me several hours over two days, but it was totally worth it. I am really happy to have a skate box that is all my own, one of a kind, that I can take with me anytime I want to go skating. Once I was done with all the details, I decided that it could use just a little bit more pizzazz. Here I'm using a technique that I picked up in grade school 
when they taught us in art class how to make fireworks. I used the two skates as the center of two concentric circles. I used all the colors that I'd used elsewhere in the project to make the circles. I continued making circles around each skate until I either ran to the edge of the panel or into the other circle. While acrylic paint is very easy to work with, it's not very durable. So I had to go ahead and make several coats of Minwax polycrylic over the top to help protect what I'd painted. And here it is all dry and done and ready to go skating. If the painting becomes scratched up and damaged, or if I just decide I want to change, it won't be that hard to clean it all off and start over again. For now, I love my little skate box. Soon I'm going to decorate the bottom. When I do, I will let you see how it goes. If you've decorated your own skate box, find me on Instagram. I would really like to see it. Thanks. See you next time.